Um, I can't. I can't hear you. Mark, I met Mark because I was um, I was originally a judge at the Louisiana Film Prize several years ago. So that's how I kind of found out about the festival. And I, I partnered up with another director that, that I had met there, and we took our film Promises of Snow. And the year that we took Promises of Snow, Mark also had a film there called Shreveport Sun. And his film Shreveport Sun actually won the grand prize at the festival. And obviously, Shreveport Sun is an amazing film. We screened it at our festival last year. And it was so interesting because Mark actually was pitching his film Bamper Bridge, which he made, he ended up making, um, and it's going through film festival circuit, the film festival circuit right now. But Mark, please introduce yourself. Please share with us just how you got into filmmaking to begin with, and just some of the inspiration that you had behind Bamper Bridge. Um, so hi everybody, my name is uh, Mark D. Bonner. Um, I'm the writer, director, producer, um, costume designer for Bamber Bridge. Um, I started out in the film um, scene as kind of just a, a writer, honestly, because I was just uh, a little bit too shy to start acting, and I just slowly inched into it as curiosity. I was like, I want, I want to try it, just try acting, and uh, I thought to be a little good at it, so I just kept uh, just practicing and practicing. Um, and then for my, I wanted to direct too, but it's like. I don't know. I don't I direct the same scary. I don't know if I'll be able to direct someone or direct myself. And I just went for it. Sometimes you just have to go for it in life. And I just went for it. And um, my debut was Shreveport Sun and premiered um, at Louisiana Film Prize. It's gotten, going to top tier film festivals. And uh, to date, it has about 13 awards. Um, and my next one was Bamber Bridge. And actually, before um, making Bamber Bridge, I was actually going to make um, another short film. I was in pre-production for that one, but the article popped up about the real incident that happened in Bamber Bridge. And I saw it, it like it touched my heart. It was like, I know there's got to be a film about this somewhere. And there was no film at all about it. I just, just see articles and articles and articles. Like, nobody's made a film about this. And it's like, uh, I guess I'll do I'll be the first to make a film about it. And I made a film about that and switched everything. I said, this story has to be told. I put the real event that happened in the center of it, but it forms around um, my style of directing, my style of storytelling. I put elements of fiction to a, to a classic style of like Casablanca, um, Citizen Kane, and... and um, seasons of like the early i love the early 90s uh 2000s still i put all that together and connected to make that the bridge that's amazing so what what did you learn making a period piece because this not only was like a unique story that you were telling but it was a period piece it was a you know the story took place a long time ago when there was segregation and there was racism was like running rampant um in in you know in europe so what what are some of the things that you learned while you were putting this film together um i learned um a lot so much um because the fact i didn't know there was i didn't know it went into the military um i know they were treated like in the military i was like i thought um kind of like how the soldiers there was thinking like the character i portrayed i went into it like how he would be thinking okay i'm supposed to the military thing would be fine and no it's about the same as america uh, um, so it's kind of like i learned that and i learned the other smaller details like i even look even search talk to authors from great britain who were um maybe the descendants of some of the people and they even told me about some of these things and it was like wow it's like it's amazing some of them did come from not not shreveport but some of them came from the south wow. and um they went over there to try to be soldiers and they were into that they got into that real incident and that's probably the most famous and also not unknown not known at the same time one but it's happened multiple times i know it's happened in uh france and things like that but this one was the most interesting because it's like the the british soldiers um kind of helped them with all that it's like no we're not for segregation 
Yep. So Mark, you know, what I know that you're always, you know, writing different projects. You said that you had a project that you had written that you were in pre-production for, you know, before Bamber Bridge, but then you came across Bamber Bridge and decided to make that story. Um, what are like, what are the stories that you have next? I mean, I know that you have the feature film that you're working on, the murder rap feature film, uh, but what are some of the other projects that you're going to be talking about with our, with our group and our network during speed networking next week? Um, I have I have uh, so many uh, different short films. I have one because uh, my short films, I kind of want to put like a message and a theme. And I have one and that's not only a message and a theme, but uh, it'll challenge me as an artist as well. Because a lot of people don't believe me, but I know I'm a, I'm a new artist and uh, it doesn't seem like it, but it's like I'm new. I'm trying to uh, kind of mold my style. So it's like my signature so it's like as soon as the spoon film comes on you'll know it's not you'll know it's directed by me i'm trying to get that that signature critique mm -hmm. and the stories that i um used to kind of craft i kind of do kind of this like uniform strategic uh method that i'm molding it this uh for my methods um i have another one that was based on a lot of big themes like um dealing with different things that teenagers do i got one that for just for um young young adults coming into life like um young girls so their their problems that they may deal with i have a sister and i learned a lot from her um and nobody can kind of put that into like a film um i have other things that kind of challenge other norms and um i think it'll kind of put it's a deep message but also entertaining i'd like to educate them as well and so each one of them so I know that you're going to be making a film for the Louisiana Film Prize, which is taking place again next year. Have you zeroed in on a particular script or a particular story that you're kind of wanting to kind of dive into? Um, I have I have about three um, really good ones, but I probably can narrow it down to maybe two both or a bit different, um, kind of like this one. It kind of is different, but it shows a, a big uh, message is about uh, the one I have with the protagonist I would love to be because I normally I've been uh, um, starring in my own things but I kind of want to get this to someone else um, particularly um, this one has to do with um, transitioning into into the adulthood but it's from a perspective of a teenage girl and I would love to get like um, cast of teenagers or not, or someone who can play a teenager as the main protagonist to that one. It, it deals with it, taking risks and taking challenges. A bit of my, um, a lot of my stories has different elements of uh, my real life in them as well. And it's kind of like exploring to those elements and also crafting it into a story. Like it's out of that one, um, which is really deep without telling the whole story. Um, it has a twist and things like that. Um, and I have another one as well that I was going to do before Amber. Um, that one has a lot of themes uh, themes in it, but it centers into one um, one thing. And it's kind of like, um, as well as external problems and internal problems that common folks have in overcoming them. That's great. Have you ever thought, I know that your film Murder Rap, you know, it's like an, it's an homage to, you know, like the 90s rap. You know, there's a lot of elements of the 90s music, you know, influences in that film. Have you ever thought about doing maybe like a short proof of concept for murder rap? And then like, you know, like submitting that to festivals to kind of get attention. And then from there, you know, after the success, you know, that that gets, you know, turning that into a feature. And the reason why I ask you that question is because I'm actually, um, executive producing a, um, a feature film, a feature film that's coming up. It's called um, Isle Child. And it's about a Korean, a Korean American kid who was adopted um, and grew up in uh, white Massachusetts. And, you know, he struggled with his identity as, um, as Korean um, because that's what he looks like. 
but he was raised and adopted by a white family. And so just kind of like struggling with that shame and that embarrassment. And so it's a great film, but he created a proof of concept, a short film, the director, and it ended up going to, he created it specifically for um, a film festival run by HBO Max. And this film ended up um, getting like in the top awards and it ended up being acquired. So HBO Max bought this proof of concept. And now he's raising money for the feature film version. So have you ever thought about, you know, it's one of those things where I know that the Louisiana Film Prize community, they love music. They love musicals. They love like, you know, those type of elements. So I just feel like, you know, with Murder Rap, because I did see that pitch that you had shared, you know, last year, I was wondering if you ever thought about maybe creating a really solid proof of concept that incorporated, you know, the 90s music, you know, in it. And then from there, after it goes to the film festival circuit, you can share with people that this is a proof of concept for the feature film that you are creating. Hmm, I, um... I thought of that. Um, I think um, because how the script is written, um, I think I, would, I could probably put some of the elements, probably focus it on the main character, and then kind of put because they because um, the nine characters is going to be a little. I know it would be a challenge, but um, I know Bamber Bridge just had thirteen characters in it. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, I definitely can see that. Um, I already have. Uh, one of the places that was the, without revealing the story of Bamber Bridge, one of the places that um, the British Royal Forces that place um, that could possibly could work as the mansion for the inside of the murder rap as well. The thing is, like for the feature film version, you can have like completely a new cast. You can have completely new locations. Like, because I know that you know with this feature film, The Isle Child it's gonna have a completely different protagonist because the protagonist that they used um, just there, I mean, it has to be a high school aged person. And the person that they cast um, was Ki Young Lee. He's a, he was an actor that was in the Maze Runner, the movie. And, you know, he's like 35. And so I know that the director wanted to kind of go towards somebody who was more, um, you know, like in their like early 20s or even like a teenager to play like the high school role, right? So, I mean, just because you make the proof concept, you know, it doesn't mean that you have to stick with the exact same, same cast or the exact same locations. And because it's a short film, you know, it could be one of those things where like, you don't have to tell the entire story, right? It's just like maybe a piece of the script that's the most interesting, you know, where you're introducing the characters, you know, and then like, I think the benefit of this could be, you know, when it goes to, you, if you do a good job and it goes to the film festivals, you know, they'll be like, oh, what's next? You know, you could say, oh, this is a proof of concept for a feature film that I've already written. I have the script where now we're looking for investors. I feel like that would make you ahead of the pack because a lot of the times when you have a proof of concept, a lot of people don't have the feature written already. You know, they don't have a lot of those elements. So it ends up taking longer. So I feel like you can really gain momentum um, with that, I think. And that was just a suggestion that I thought of because I already saw the pitch for Murder Rap. And I do think that it's something that hasn't been done. And everybody loves 90s music, you know, especially like our generation, you know, like the millennial generation, like the millennial generation grew up with like the 90s music. And so, you know, it's just, I feel like it would be kind of nostalgic and people would maybe gravitate towards it purely for that reason too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think um, in the actual script, I know um, it's like they go into the, um, go into the hunted thing to kind of make the, it's, it's a it's a few lyrical moments inside of the uh, inside of the script, but it's mostly like uh, it's mostly like an intense uh, thriller, uh, mostly. Yeah, intense definitely. Um, I think I think that would be definitely a good idea. I think I would have to because um, based on how it's structured right now, I think I would have to um, probably focus it around um, one element of it. I think it could definitely work. Uh, proof of concept. Uh, I'm not, I've been told, like, uh, I know Shreveport's son and Bamba Bridge, they both kind of like full kind of proof of concept for 
uh, bigger budget um, features. Uh, but I think definitely can be done. Yeah, I mean, I think that because, you know, just like from an investment standpoint, you know, there are a lot of investors out there where, you know, it's like I, I was engaging in a conversation on LinkedIn with some executive producers, right? Some angel investors and executive producers. And a lot of them are kind of like, oh, you know, I don't invest in short films. Only the only time I do is if they're a proof of concept for a feature film. And, you know, a lot of the reason why they say that is because, you know, for like most the majority of executive producers, you know, unless they themselves want to be an actor in it or they're gaining something from the film in that way, um, they're looking to make their money back, right? They're, it's like, why invest, you know, like, you know, like tens of thousands of dollars, you know, for nothing, they want to get something back. And so if it's for a proof of concept with a potential for a return on investment in the feature film, once they sell it down the line, I feel like it's a lot easier to garner interest from, you know, angel investors, right? You know, when you're putting together the feature film, right? And especially because they've already invested in the proof of concept, they're more likely to jump on board, right? And continue um, seeing like the story through, especially if the proof of concept does really well on the festival circuit. Oh, absolutely. Um, so no, just like um, um, the things that's in place for a murder rap, it kind of has a, um, um, I know there's different options for distribution, but it already, already has a um, an option for distribution in place. And, um, and uh, Louisa will be filmed in Louisiana. Louisiana has two different separate uh, tax breaks, not only for filming there, but also a resident who's written the script in Louisiana. And the script is written in Louisiana by me. Yeah. Um, and also has the, um, it's and also inside of the movie makers program to where they'll match. Whatever. Yes. Uh, so you have marketing. You already have marketing behind you. Movie Maker Magazine is a huge marketing arm, right? And just by you saying that you're involved with them, that automatically gives you credibility in the entertainment in the entertainment world, right? Which should, you know, pique the interest of potential investors in the future. So I mean, I definitely think that, you know, that would be really interesting to see. It'd be very different, you know, because I know that, you know, a lot of the times, you know, at Louisiana Film Prize, like a lot of the films start being kind of similar, you know? And so it's like, I feel like changing it up, you know, in this way may be very, it may be exciting <laughs> to see. Oh yeah, definitely. I can, um, I probably, I write, I normally write pretty fast. I think once I think of a, a, a concept, I probably could think about it by tomorrow about um, <laughs> writing it as a, a proof of concept. Um, so actually, Murder Rat actually started as a short, believe it or not. I started oh. as a long short, like a 40 minute short. As yeah. as I wrote it and I extended it to become a feature instead because I knew it's hard to program a 40 minute short. Yeah. So it, it actually did start as a long version of a short. Well, Mark, I know that you are going places and I just feel like just all these open doors that you're walking through is they're just signs that you are exactly where you're supposed to be. So if people want to follow you in your journey, if people want to stay connected to you, what are the best ways that people can stay in touch with you? Um, currently, I update regularly. Um, um, on the social media, so Bamber Bridge, the current act, most active ones, it's um, Bamber underscore Bridge on Instagram and on Facebook. It is Bamber Bridge the short. Um, I also update my company's website now. It's going to be called uh, The Mind of Ten Films. So it's going to be on Facebook as well. And that's going to be all my um, content updates are going to be on that one particular. That's on Facebook and it's on Instagram. What, what was that? What was the name of that one again, Mark? The Mind of Um, The Mind of M Films. The Mind of M Films. Yes. Perfect. Um, I'm gonna post all of my uh, the updated um current projects that I'm working on, uh casting and uh things like that. Um and it's just proof that, you know, when you just kind of take that leap of faith, because uh, I never imagined I could, two years ago, like, making two films that both have 
went how they went and going to both having I mean, the distribution deals to start the HBK network. So yeah, right, no way. But yeah, it's in place and I just started just a year ago. So a lot of stuff can happen. Well, that's awesome. Well, Mark, we definitely look forward to seeing all of the wonderful things that you're going to be putting out. And for our audience, be sure to check out Bamper Bridge and our video on demand uh, during our festival next week. And Mark, thank you so much for taking the time and chatting with us. Oh, absolutely. Bye, Mark. Right, bye, guys.